Hello everyone, my name is Troy. And I'm Mike. Welcome back to Facility D20. This is going to be another encounter video where we discuss our latest build on the tabletop and our experiences playing through it. This time we went to a familiar location in the Sore Coast in Faroon, um, Candle Keep. Candle Keep, the great keep, never fails to take my breath away. It stands on a volcanic crag a hundred or so feet above the coastline. A flat top spur of rough stone out in the midst of the surging sea. Imagine, if you can, the top of this crag heaved in entirely by a tall wall. This wall is interrupted by several towers all the way around it, and it encloses a large space from which even more of these same towers rise. Those who have seen this vista from above have said that it looks nothing so much as a cake decorated with too many candles. The mist of sea spray fills the air nearest the western wall. In the winter, this moisture can cause treacherous buildups of ice. Sometimes entire towers along the western edge of the keep have been abandoned for the season. They become so overtaken by frost. Candle Keep is the largest respiratory of lore and writings in all the realms. It was once the home of the great prophet Alandro the seer, and within its walls were written the prophecies of Alandro. His vaults is said to contain hidden knowledge, enough to make any person with the ability to discover and absorb it all-powerful beyond compare. Yeah, this one was a little interesting. We uh, managed to sail upon a, uh, an island that is essentially just a really big library. <laughs> yeah, and the nice thing about this is that uh, the only real way to get there was up a cliff face or through one particular pathway but now the guys are at level 14 it's uh, pretty easy for them to get over a cliff yeah when we see a cliff now we uh, we end up polymorphing one of our guys into a giant crab and then cast him fly on him <laughs> we just took a giant flying crab into the middle of a, like a monk library monastery um, so we a lot of information with Candle Keep, of course, comes from the internet. But this book here in particular is a great source of information for everything in the Sword Coast, and I rely heavily on this um, when we ran Candle Keep. And there was a few ideas presented in this book that I really tried to, um, I guess, portray throughout the encounter. So I'm going to take you guys in and just show you what we built. We built the the bucket build you can see up here. <laughs> I'll link the video in the description where we made this uh, three tier library out of a five gallon bucket. It was pretty cool, and uh, you guys seem to enjoy yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to check that out, check it out, and I'll take you in and show you the setup that we have. So here we can see the library tower. It's basically a half moon shape where the fourth wall was essentially just a full brick wall, which I explained to the characters. Down below here we've got some cobblestone, some terrain crate, bookshelves. The staircases were purposely staggered so that the players couldn't just climb right to the top immediately. They kind of had to work their way up. Here we have some suits of armor, some wooden beams, a real small cramped encounter space. It was kind of nice uh, moving vertically again. Instead of room to room, we kind of moved upwards. It was kind of fun to do. And again, it's gridless, but it was so small that distances really wasn't a factor here at all. The tea lights worked out nice, provided some ambience. And overall, this was a pretty cool build. The players seemed to enjoy it a lot. So that's the, that's the build that we had for it. It was pretty cool. So when these guys first approached it, there was a few things I wanted to portray. And the first was the entry in order to gain entry to the actual keep. Yeah, through our adventures, we uh, we had picked up. We we heard that there is uh, there's a price to enter Candle Keep, and uh, we end up collecting some rare books, some stuff that's not commonly known, and so we could trade it to get entry. Yeah, and that's so one of the key things with Candle Keep. If you're going in there, the price to entry, uh, like you just explained, is very important to get in there. So. Throughout this campaign, you guys were actually looking for books leading up to this moment. Yeah, we so, uh, we had some lore, local lore and legend books and some strange chemical books and whatever we could find that was like, this is not what you would find normally. So uh, it was pretty cool. So that paid off and they gained entry to it. Um, and then there they met some monks that were referred to as the Avowed. And the Avowed are a group of monks who live and work in Candle Keep. And their job is to, of course... Uh, oversee the library and keep everything safe and protect it, but also to uh, remember and recite the prophecies of Alandro, uh, which I also try to portray in this um, campaign. When we first started, you guys were all kind of like joined together over this like... Uh, we all had the same birthmark. 
Yeah, and it links to a prophecy that they're just now discovering. So when they went into Candle Keep 50 sessions later, yeah, <laughs> they finally learned that they're part of this prophecy. And the way I did it was uh, I had the avowed start to chant aspects of it once they started talking about it. Yeah, we, uh, we all got in there and uh, we had a book that we had found at the beginning of the campaign that was in some sort of decrypted language that we couldn't read. And the whole reason we came to Candlekeep was to get the codex to, to uh, decipher it, because we knew that's where it was too. So uh, after getting the key to decipher it and learning that the five of us are the key to some sort of ritual to mind meld into a kraken, <laughs> uh, we are now got a whole different set of adventures ahead of us yeah so it was pretty cool it was a really it was a really like uh, climactic episode in terms of role play and storyline mm -hmm. uh, of course we had to slip in some fun there so we had an old stoner gnome yeah. that we refer to as the first reader he's basically the head librarian that you guys spoke to uh, and he he was a fun little gnome character to play yeah. and he brought you to a wing of the library that was essentially haunted by ghosts so the crawl then involved you guys working your way up from the bottom floor to the top to find out why these ghosts had suddenly inherited the, this library, this keep. Yeah, it turned out that there was a tablet that was fragmented, and then on each level we had to find the pieces of the fragment and put it together to suck all the poltergeists back into this, uh, this, uh, this tablet. But uh, when we got let in there, the, uh, the gnome said, don't hurt anything don't destroy anything <laughs> just get your tablet you find the fractions and get out on which our bar our barbarian who's afraid of ghosts immediately turned around and tried to rip the door handle off to get out but ended up <laughs> breaking the door handle and there was bookshelves thrown a water elemental punched a wall full of books <laughs> because one fell on his buddy you smashed the shit out of this entire library. Oh yeah, this place was ruined when and, we got out. And one of the, like the key rules here is um, they're very they don't want anybody to destroy any knowledge. Yeah. They basically say anybody who destroys knowledge uh, essentially destroys themselves. And these guys just wrecked three stories of this library. <laughs> it was a very Ghostbuster um, oh, yeah. hotel type feel. I played a lot of Ghostbuster soundtracks just because we uh, kind of yep. got into the mood. It was uh, it was a good fun. Uh we came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Did you see it? What is it? We got it! What is it? Will there be any more of them? <coughs> Sir, what you had there was what we refer to as a focused, non-terminal repeating phantasm or a class 5 full roaming vapor. Real nasty one, too. Uh, we also found out that uh, as we were finding the pieces, uh, one of our party members thought, hey, if I start reading the tablet because there was names on it, maybe it'll like suck them back in one at a time or whatever. So we had, uh, there, it came in waves, like all of them came in on the first floor, the second floor, then the third floor. And while we were on the second floor, uh, the bard read out the name Greg, which happened to be one that we had already beaten, and it re-summoned him out <laughs> and then tossed him across the room. So there was a vendetta against Greg every time he came yeah. back. Poor old Greg got killed four times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially what we use here, we use uh, the spirits or the specters out of the monster man manual, except we use um, the variant for the poltergeist here. And the biggest difference is they have a telekine telekinesis. Uh, telekinetic thrust. There we go. There we go. Which essentially they can throw s small to medium sized objects and people around the room. So uh, because these guys are like level 14 and a challenge rating one is not much of a challenge, even when there's like eight of them. Yeah. <laughs> I decided to make all their damage 3d6 bludgeoning for their tele uh, telekinetic thrust and also max them out on hit points. But it wasn't meant to be like a real dangerous sort of crawl. It was meant. It was meant to be like a fun beat 'em yeah. up sort of. It, it, we definitely adventure. had that feel where we uh, we were blowing things up and like when we get a crit or anything like that, we were killing a ghost in one hit. Made yeah. you feel like really strong. Yes, and that was the idea here. Was just was to get in there to get the books that you needed to learn the information to continue the storyline. And this was just a fun beer and pretzels encounter yeah. beat them up was it meant to be like a hardcore <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah we uh, so we end up finding all three pieces of the tablet and as soon as we assembled it it sucked all the poltergeists in uh to which our bard had a brilliant idea a terrible idea <laughs> it was a wonderful idea to uh 
take this tablet now and see if we can't fasten a cannonball around it so that when we shoot it out of our cannon and hit an enemy ship that it would break the tablet and then not only did they just suffer a fire or a uh, cannonball damage their, go- <laughs> their boat's now haunted by ghosts i was like <laughs> it was brutal because i'm like this is an item i'm gonna make i'm like oh man i was thinking about just having an item be destroyed when it got assembled but i said nah we'll let them keep it i wonder if they'll think about keeping it and breaking it and using it as like to their advantage but little did I know they were going to make a cannonball out of it. And I'm like, now, great. I got to deal with this in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, this was our quick video today for our quick encounter. It was real cool. Again, if you want to see the Wizard Tower build, uh, it's here. I'll link it at the end of the video. Smash subscribe. Until next time, guys. See ya.